Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times, brought to you this Monday, February 21, 2022, by Wilcon Depot, the country's leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer. Shop conveniently 24-7 with Wilcon Online Store. Just go to shop.wilcon.com.ph. For today's editorial, platforms of education deserve more attention. Education does not seem to be receiving the attention it deserves this election season. Despite its role in preparing Filipinos to meet present and future challenges, both the candidates and much of the general public appear to have only a limited appreciation of education issues and policies. What has been discussed so far has to do with increasing teachers' salaries. Undoubtedly, the teachers are deserving. But what policymakers have neglected is the negative side effects experienced by the private education sector which does not enjoy the same support for its teachers. As a result, private schools are struggling to retain their teaching staff, many of whom are migrating to public schools because of the higher pay. That migration is an added strain on private schools, which has suffered arguably worse than most sectors because of the pandemic. Some of their learners are either transferred to public schools to save on costs or dropped out. As a result, many private schools have folded, which of course translates to added jobs lost. Most private school owners likely recognize that the health crisis is temporary. What may matter more is an even playing field, which has been tilted against them by the unintended consequences of well-meant policies. No one, perhaps not even those in private schools, argue against giving generous wages to teachers. But policymakers need to remember that private schools also need support. Not all of them are as wealthy as De La Salle, Ateneo, or the University of San Tomas. Many private schools are small enterprises, and several of them serve remote communities where they are the only option for learners. Worse, many in the private education system feel that regulators exceed their mandates, and that existing policies are so restrictive that they suppress innovation. Private schools even fend off unrelenting propositions that undermine not only their ability to provide quality education, but also their economic viability. People seem to forget that the 1987 Constitution recognizes the value of private schools, which invest capital for a public good. The state recognizes the complementary roles of public and private institutions in the educational system and shall exercise reasonable supervision and regulation of all educational institutions, according to Article 14, Section 4. Public Needs At the recent presidential debate organized by SMNI in partnership with the Manila Times, former Senator Ferdinand Bongo Marcos Jr. argued that public schools still need more support from the government. Admittedly, he has a point, given the congested classrooms and overall poor quality of facilities in public schools. Another candidate for president, Manila Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Domogoso, may be thinking similarly, but he did not attend the debate. In Manila, he led the groundbreaking for a new school building in Sampalo that will have equipment and amenities common in the private sector. These are well and good. We hope that whoever wins in May, the next government will consider policies that benefit the entire education system, including private schools. Neglecting them would be like a person favoring one leg over the other. Moving forward like that would be difficult, to say the least. For starters, the next government could expand or enhance existing programs, like the vouchers given to students. Both public and private schools are bound to benefit from that. Also, the Department of Education, or DepEd, has created a unit will coordinate with the private sector and that may need more resources and policy support. But if additional resources are not possible now, some private schools might settle for relaxing regulations that have become unreasonable, not only at the basic level, but also in colleges and universities. Lastly, the next government should continue DepEd's pivot to quality education. To be clear, that does not mean access issues like building more classrooms will be abandoned. Instead, DepEd's pivot recognizes that the national objective goes beyond awarding a diploma. That piece of paper should open doors to career opportunities in an economy that is rapidly evolving. The future supposedly favors the Philippines because of its young population. But if education policies fail to level up, the country is likely to miss many opportunities. And that's editorial for Monday, February 21, 2022. 
For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.